Hard Fanatic 409, and I'm back after I think it was a year. I haven't put on a video in a while, but today I'm going to do another episode of 123 Create. Um, so, the card I'm making today is inspired by Christina Warner, the technique that I used, and it's a happy birthday card. So, I'm going to link her channel down in the down bar if I can, but I'm also going to try to link the video to how she showed how to do this technique. Um, I don't remember what she called it, but it's really cool. It kind of just looks like the flowers are popping off the page. Um, something, I think the video was called, the technique at least, was called like white with color over or something like that. I can't remember the name, but I'm, I'll try to link the video down down below. But if I can't and I don't find out how to link it, um, just type in Star of May's channel and you'll be able to find the video. Just scroll down her videos and you'll see um, something like this, but she doesn't use a flower stencil. But I'll try, I'll really try to figure out how to link her channel and the um, video as well. Because I really like Christina Werner. Um, she works for Simon Says, uh, Simon Says Stamp, I believe. So, to do this, I'm just going to quickly tell you what I used. I used the stencil, I believe it's from Walmart. You can use really any stencil, but I just used the flower one. And the inks I used to create this, I used the Stamp Abilities Pastel Yellow. Is that the color? Yeah, pastel yellow pigment ink pad for the yellow down here, like you can kind of see. <laughs> um, I use the Colorbox Paintbox Fluid Chalk ink pad. I don't know what ink pad did I use out of this. I used this one. I used French Blue for right here. And then for the top color, I used Colorbox Archival Dye ink pad in Dark Cherry. And how I got the purple is by blending the blue and the Dark Cherry one together. So really play around with the colors because I'm sure you'll create your own. Um, but yeah, it was really fun to do it. And you'll just need a little bit of masking tape, but she'll show you how to do the technique. So I'm going to try to link the video down below. Okay, so I just started with the craft base. I did the technique. Then I grabbed my DCWV textured cardstock stack. I don't, I've never really heard of this brand, so... Um, yeah, I just had it lying around, <laughs> and it's in the brights, and I'm using a purple piece of paper out of it because I wanted to pick up the purple. And you can see I just stamped this happy birthday stamp on it, and then I cut it to fit, and I did this little stencil so I know how to cut the little um, flag shape end. The stamp I used, I, it has no brand name, which is so stupid. Um, it says Momenta 2013. I'm really, I'm really not sure. Um, hopefully it's focusing part way for you. Probably not. Um, but it had no brand name. I just found it in Hobby Lobby one day and I loved the way it was set out. It was a really like fun way of saying happy birthday. So I used that and the white ink pad I used was the archival pigment ink pad in uh, the Brilliance line and it was Moonlight White. And this is an amazing white ink pad. Definitely pick this up if you, um, if it's sold where you live. It's just a really good ink pad. So once I made that little flag shape, or the ribbon, yeah, not flag, I'm sorry, the ribbon tail end, I'm just going to cut it out here. And you don't have to do a, f um, like a f tail end like this, you can do whatever you want. I think these are really fun to do. And the card that I'm creating today, I want this to kind of overlay it because I'm not going to mail it. So it's okay if it kind of, the um, piece of paper comes off the paper a little bit. I really want to zoom in, but I can't, um, I can't with my camera, which is great. I'll find out how to soon, hopefully. Um, but yeah, let's just tilt it down. There we go. Okay, so I have my little, um, Wow, I can't speak today. <laughs> My little piece of paper to put on. And I'm going to distress it a little bit with just a nail file. You can do this with professional distressors, but um, a nail file works actually really good. So I'm just going to take the edges and I'm just going to distress it a little bit. And you can use any nail file that you come across. Um, you can buy them at whatever you want, even the dollar store. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a good nail file because, yeah. It's just going to file some paper. I don't like to use the ones I use for my nails, if you do have one that you use for your nails, because it will, like, stain this, and I don't know. I mean, you can use it if you want on your nails in this, but... So I just distressed it like that a little bit. I really like the look of that on it. So, 
There we go. And I'm just going to lay it somewhere around there. Um, I hope this is a good setting. I finally figured out kind of how to place my camera. Um, so I hope this kind of works for you guys. <laughs> I wish I could zoom in for you. But, um, yeah, it's being not nice. So before gluing that down, I'm going to take some flowers, which I got, I believe, at Michael's. There's, they were, I don't know um, the brand because I got them so long ago. But they're just little white five-petal flowers, and you can find them, I'm pretty sure, any place. So, I'm going to use um, a purple ink pad right here in the Color Box Paint Box. Ooh, Color Box Paint Box Fluid Chalk Ink Pad. I'm going to use the purple, which is in lavender. <coughs> oh, this whole, like, palette, if you want to call it, is called Ocean Breeze. The whole ink pad set is called Ocean Breeze. So, I'm going to use the purple to kind of, like, transform the flowers and make them a little bit prettier and I'm going to use this dark cherry ink pad as well by Colorbox. So I'm going to start with just a little bit of this light purple. I have a paper, a piece of paper underneath so that it um, doesn't get all over my desk. This one is not very pigmented, this purple. But anyway, just, I'm going to lightly dye them. So you can't really tell the difference between these. I mean, well, the camera's probably not picking it up. But I just lightly coated them. I'm going to use three. I wish I could uh, do it faster, but this ink pad is a little bit dry. I don't know why that is. Sometimes, um, I think it's just the, like, this is a year old, this ink pad, so I think... Um, it just gets dried out over time. <coughs> okay, so I just used the light purple to do that. And now I'm going to take the dark purple, and I'm really going to just touch the ends of the flower with it and kind of, I mean, you can do whatever you want. I hope you can, ugh, this camera, <laughs> it needs to pick this up. But it kind of just went on the edge there. Once I finish this little flower, and do the complete flower, I'll show you um, up close. I just want to just dip it in just the edge of the flower. And you can like touch your fingers to it to make it a little lighter afterwards. But it's going to look something like that. You just can do whatever you want. Don't try to make a hard line so they can see where you stopped using the ink, which I kind of actually did that with one petal, but you know what, it still looks good. So I'm just going to finish kind of dabbing these, like so. And you can use any, um, any colors you want because it doesn't have to be purple. I tried to stick with purple because the card I'm doing is for a girl. I mean, you probably picked that up with all the flowers, <laughs> but um, I kind of wanted to pick up purple and use that as my main color. I try to do that with my cards. Um, find a color that I want to really work with for the whole card and try to focus that color the most. So purple was trying was the one that I want to kind of focus on today. But if you were doing a different card and say you wanted blue to kind of focus on, then you would just try to pick up blue in as many places as you can. So I really like this ink pad too. It's like a kind of a burgundy red. Okay, once you're done dyeing your flowers, I have three right here. I'm gonna get some flat fat pearls. You do need flat ones for this, and I'm using the Paper Studio little gemstones. These are great. They're not um, expensive, so they work great for all projects just like that and just place a little pearl in the center. You don't have to do that, but I'm just gonna go ahead and place a little pearl in the center. It makes the flower look a lot better. If you don't want a pearl, you could do um, a diamond flat back, you know, like a shiny one instead of just a pearl. But I really like using pearls on in the center of my flowers. Just, did I lose the stickiness? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to pick it off the strand because these are all connected. Sometimes you lose the stickiness to one. <clears throat> okay, so I have my three little pearls in the flowers. Now I'm going to glue down this little, um, the tag that I'm using with my 
saying on it. I'm sorry, I forgot to plug my glue gun in, of course, so it's just going to take a minute to heat up. But, um, I'm going to take the tag and I'm going to glue it down with some 3D, 3D foam thingies because these are a little easier to use and they give it a 3D effect. Hold on, I'm just going to get the bigger ones. And it just, it lifts it off the page so it gives your card dimension. So I'm just going to add uh, probably five-ish, maybe six, since it is kind of a long tag. I ended up adding quite a lot. <laughs> I'm just going to peel the backs off. I don't know the brand of these 3D foam um, squares, but I got them in a set, a card making set, I believe. So I don't know what brand they could have been. Somewhere in Michaels I got them. <laughs> And you're just going to place your little sentiment on your card. And I like to kind of just take the ends of my flag or little tag um, to pick it up a little bit to give it more dimension. If you're not mailing it, you can do that. If you're mailing it, it's a little harder, but yes, I like doing that. Okay, so now you're going to take your flowers that we've, you know, colored to our desire. That's another thing I really like about these flowers is that they come in cream. Um, and they were in the wedding section of Michael's, that's what they were, and they were just a big box of them, and I picked it up a while ago, and they've lasted me forever. Um, but I like that they're cream because I can change them whatever colors I want. I hope that the color is picking up. Um, you can see it that way better. <laughs> so, I'm going to take my glue gun, if it's heated up, yeah it is, and I'm just going to put a little, little dot on the back of the flowers. You don't need a lot, because that's not going to... You don't want it um, spilling out on the sides or anything. Many times when you're using hot glue to um, adhere little embellishments like this, at least this happens to me, is that it like, warms up the glue on my pearl and it makes the pearl fall off, so I have to like reposition it. I'm just going to put a little drop here and just think where you want to put it. I want two at the end. And I'm going to put one, oops, sorry, the glue strands. It's the only thing I love hot glue, but the glue strands get quite annoying. I'm going to put one to the side here, kind of up in the corner. Just place it like that. But you can place it in any order you want. I mean, that's totally up to you. But I like using three because usually... With embellishments, I follow a little, like, I guess it's not a rule because everyone doesn't have to follow it, but um, I think using odd numbers are the best. Like, four wouldn't really look right because I need to have to find, like, put it in the corner over here, and I feel like that wouldn't look good. I like using odd numbers, so if I put three ships of paper, I like three instead of four. But um, I can't remember who told me, like, odd numbers were better to use on cards, but I can't remember who. <laughs> but there the card is, and then once you're done with... That, you're just going to fold it over like this and crease the side with a bone folder. I like to use my slice bone folder and just crease the side of it. And to finish up the card, I actually like to round the edges, and this is an EK um, success little corner rounder. I'm just going to stick it in there and round the edges. It just gives the card also a little bit of a softer look. The edges aren't so sharp, I guess. <laughs> but there's the card. Inspired by Christina Werner. I'm going to link her channel and the video to this, uh, how to do the technique in the background, in the down bar, if I can find out how to do that. Um, I'm pretty sure I will be able to. <laughs> anyway, but thank you for watching, and uh, you know, I'll be posting more videos soon. Bye.